Hello everybody and welcome back to Principles of Game Design. This module we're going to be modeling the emblem that is going to be sitting on top of our chest. So first step, same thing we do every module, we're going to go to set project and we're going to make sure that we're not in our C drive. We're going to go to that project that we made that first week and make sure that we're setting our project. Good. Now that we've done that, let's get started with modeling this emblem. So our very first step is going to be going to our poly modeling tab, if you're not already in there, and making a plane. So here's our plane. I'm going to go ahead and drag that up. Hold V as I move it around. I want to line it up to that front slit we made last week on the lid of our chest. Now that it's there, we're going to rotate it around. 45 degrees, match it to that angle of that slant, and then scale it up nice and big so that it matches up with the lid. There we go. Now we're going to crank up the subdivisions. Uh, we're going to need quite a lot of them, so I'm going to go, oh, 150 or 200. And this will give us plenty of edge loops to work with as we model. Now what we're going to be doing, instead of the usual modeling tools, we're going to be using our Sculpt tool over here in the Sculpting tab, first one on the left. And the Sculpting tool lets us work with models as if they were clay. So you might notice that I have this little black dot. If I hold B and move my mouse away and towards that center of that dot, I can change the size of this brush and it'll allow me to draw on my model. Now you might also notice that I have two dots. That's because of this big blue box up top, which is my symmetry tool. So while we're sculpting, because we're going to be making something fairly symmetrical, I don't want to have to mirror it every two seconds, so I'm just going to turn that symmetry onto X. Then I'm going to come back down here, go to my tool settings, and there's a couple of settings that we want to take particular notice of. First off is the build-up setting, which changes how strong the brush is. If your value is too low, you'll get very subtle changes, but if your value is too high, then it'll be very difficult to control the tool. At our scale, I'm going to leave the build-up at 10, but you can always change that later if you want some finer detail. And then, of course, if you don't want to use the B key to change the size of your brush, you can also change the brush size manually in those tool settings. Now let's get started modeling that emblem. Now when I hit the smooth preview key, I'm going to get a warning. That's because we have a large amount of subdivisions. Uh, but if you go ahead and ignore that warning and you hit that smooth preview key, you'll notice that my mesh turns green. That is good. That is the sculpting tool's way of telling us that this mesh is safe to be sculpted on. If anything goes wrong while you are sculpting, hit Smooth Preview, and if it's not the shade of green, that means you probably need to go back to an older save. Now let's go ahead and pop in my front view, and I'm going to also be moving my reference images a little bit closer just so that while I'm working on the object in my perspective view, I can still see all of the parts of the reference that I need to see. Now I do want to give a little disclaimer here before we dive in. Sculpting is a very organic, very painterly process, so commentary from this point on may be a little sparse. I'll try and chime in here and there with what I'm doing or the tools that I'm using, uh, but otherwise pay close attention to the video so that you can properly follow along. Now our first step is going to be roughing out this lion head. So I'm just going to go ahead and build up the basic shape you know, a couple of eyes and a mouth section. So we're just going to hold left click and draw on our model and create that sort of triangle-ish head shape. Thank you. 
Now I'm going to separate the mouth out from the nose, and that's by holding control to get a cut tool. It inverts the sculpt tool so that it pushes in instead of pulling out. And with the shift key, I'm smoothing it. So it is control to go in and shift to smooth. Now we're just going to build up the chin a bit, build up the nose. And my pattern really is to just build it up with left click, shift left click to smooth it, and then undo it a couple hundred times until I get it perfect. <laughs> Now the nose is sort of bell-shaped, uh, but it's more pronounced in the middle. And you'll just see me pop over to my reference every so often as I sculpt primarily in the perspective view. And I'm going to block in some of these larger bulges. So we've got the cheekbones, the forehead, Now I'm going to go ahead and carve in some of the grooves on the nose. So that again is by holding control to invert my sculpt tool. So we're just holding control and painting in that cut and then holding shift to smooth it out some. And remember, at any time, you can adjust your brush size, either in the tool settings or by holding the B key and dragging your mouse in and out. Now we're going to try and carve in that tongue shape in the bottom lip. Seems like our brush might be a bit too big, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Hold B, shrink down my brush, and again, hold Control to add in a cut around that tongue shape. Hold shift to try and smooth that out underneath. That looks all right. Now let's go ahead and add in some eyeballs. So we're gonna add in a sphere, drag that on up. Shrink it down. Drag it into our eye socket. and then start sculpting in the eyelids and eyebrows. Don't be afraid to move your camera around if necessary. And let's also go ahead and seal up this cleft between the two eyebrows, uh, mostly with our shift click to smooth it. Then let's really accentuate that eyebrow, make it look like a proper mad lion. Also going to go ahead and mirror our eyeball. 
and see how we're doing. Not looking too bad. Now we're going to go ahead and add in the start of the main of the line. So again, with our sculpting tool, I'm just going to brush in some rough shapes. We also have to account on the sides for the ears. Rough those in. Let's smooth those down a bit. Then we're going to go ahead and add the bottom part of the mane, which is really just a ring around the head. Let's make that a little thicker. Smooth it down at the bottom. going to add in some of these ridges, uh, sculpt some of them out and carve some of them in. Remember it is regular click to sculpt out and control click to carve in. And then shift to smooth. Now that we have a fairly good start on our lion head, I'm gonna go over to the left panel. Let's go to face select real quick. Go over to the left panel, and I'm gonna look for this tool that looks like a paintbrush. And this is another selection tool. It's very similar to when we hold tab and paint over faces, except that this paint select tool gives me another brush size that I can hold B and adjust the size of with my mouse. And I'm just going to paint a selection of faces all the way around my emblem. All the way around. And I want to delete all of the faces that I've painted. Isolate that line delete some of the floating geometry that we missed. And then we need to clean up the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and select some of these edges and delete them. And then to really clean up our edge, I'm gonna go back to my sculpting tool shrink it down quite a bit, and then go into these edges, and I'm going to smooth them, so just hold shift and smooth. Now we're going to go ahead and add in some more detail lines, hold control, and let's cut into the ears and the mane again. Now 
rotate it around a bit, make sure that everything looks all right. Keep adding in some more cuts. decided that I actually want to get rid of the fur underneath my chin so that it stands out a bit more. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of this with my paint select tool and delete that. and I'm going to group them, center my pivot on them, because I want to scale my emblem down a bit, made it a little bit too large. And now I want to slide my emblem down. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and modify my pivot, hit D, rotate it. 45 degrees, so I'm rotating the directions I'm allowed to move my object in, and then we're going to slide it down. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and select this top edge, and again, I'm going to Go ahead and extrude it, hit D so that I can rotate my axes, rotate them 45 degrees and pull some extra faces up. And I'm going to use this to form that little crown shape we have up top. And now I'm going to hit the B key. And what the B key is going to do is it's going to turn on my soft select. So if we come into the modeling toolkit, I've got this soft select section. And you can see that when I hit the B key normally, it toggles that between on and off. And I have this volume range, which effectively changes how far this distance from my selection radiates out into the things that I don't have selected. So by default, it's set to five. I'm going to shrink that down quite a bit because I just want to edit the center piece rotate my pivot d and rotate it hit d again and i'm going to pull these faces up and that's going to give me that middle peak on my lion mane same thing with the next couple of pieces oh forgot to rotate my pivot let's hit d go ahead and rotate that Pull them up one more time, select another edge, hit D, rotate my pivot, pull the faces up. And what the soft select does is it pulls all of those red edges along with my main selection. Let's go ahead and bring down these corners a bit. Select a corner, hit D, rotate my pivot, and let's warp that selection a bit. We can even go ahead and rotate it a bit, push that in. Let's grab some of these edges, move those in. Grab the next set, pull those out a bit, mayhaps. The next set, pull those out. Let's even rotate them out a bit. I 
and get that nice crown shape on top of our line. Now we need to patch up this edge because it's pulled away from our model a bit. So we're going to go ahead and double click it. Hit B so that we turn off our soft select. And I'm just going to scale these edges flat. Now they're nice and flat. Let's go ahead, hit D, rotate our pivot around. Oh, hold J to make sure that it's snapping to the right angles. There we go. And then we're going to hit W and pull those edges back down a bit. And we're even going to extrude them back. Good. Now we're going to go over to object mode. And we want to make sure that it is up flush against the model. Push it in a bit. Good. Maybe even get it clipping just a shred. Oh, but we're currently selecting the object and not the group. Let's go ahead and fix that. Select the group this time and push the whole group back just so that the eyes don't bug out of the head. There we go, that feels all right. All right, one last piece. We've got to build the handle that is inside of the lion's mouth. So we're going to go to our poly modeling tab. I'm going to go ahead and add in a sphere. Let's go ahead and drag that up. We're going to put the sphere in the lion's mouth, scale it down, make sure that it's tucked away there nicely. Good. And we're going to go ahead and rotate it so that it's pointing left and right. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and chop off the ends. So let's go to face select, select a couple faces and delete them. Same thing on the other side, select a couple faces and delete them. And then we'll delete both end caps. Then we're going to rotate around to edge and we're going to bridge both end caps. Rotate around the object, control one. And we can see that now we have this drum shape and we need to fix up this end gone on both of our caps. Now you'll notice that our symmetry has been a bit odd. That's because we rotated the object. So the object's X axis is actually rotated. So in order to fix that, we're gonna go up to modify and freeze transformations. And now we're gonna turn back our symmetry to object X. And now our symmetry is facing the right way and we can use our multi-cut tool and we won't have to mirror this object. So now we'll just use our multi-cut tool and break up this big engon. Careful not to add in unnecessary edges. Make sure that you are drawing through the center point each time. And that should be both sides complete. So let's go ahead and make a torus and move it up, line it up with the mouthpiece. We're going to go ahead and rotate it slightly and line it up again. Let's also go ahead and pop open our channel box and see what inputs we have to edit our torus. We don't really want to make a huge change to the radius since that changes the overall size of the torus. Let's go ahead and leave that at one or maybe maybe 1.5. We could get away with 1.5. Let's go ahead and readjust it one more time. 
change our section radius to make it thinner. Not that thin. Point two seems all right. No, there we go. And let's one more time readjust it, make sure it's fitting inside of the lines math. There we go. There we go. And that is essentially the finished emblem. Go ahead and make sure that all of the pieces are in the same group. Put them in your chest group and then copy the whole thing over to your render setup and pump out some good renders.